Welcome. In front of me I have the AMP4 Reno 10 Pro and today I'll go over unboxing, overview and also a suggestion for a better device to be completely honest. So without further ado let's just get straight into it and see what we're dealing with. This device costs a little over 600 euros uh, or uh, close to well, without like one um, 40,000 rupees. So, with that being said, we don't get a case for that price, apparently, because that would be a little bit too much value. Um, then we get our device, which honestly looks almost exactly the same as the non pro version. We get a, a hefty 80 watt charger. Damn and a cable type c to type a and that's basically all we get in a box so let's turn on the, the device and i'm gonna start off with the display which you should be able to see in just a second so this is a 6.7 inch display uh, with a resolution of 1080p by 2412 it is an AMOLED display boasting 1 billion colors, 120 Hz refresh rate, HDR 10 plus certified with a peak brightness of 950 nits, which uh, in this case, it's exactly the same uh, specs as the non-pro version of this device. Now, when we flip it over to the back, we have a main sensor being 50 megapixel wide sensor f1.8 24 millimeters. Uh, multi-directional uh, PDAF with optical image stabilization. Then below that we have a 32 megapixel f2.0 47mm telephoto lens uh, also boasting a PDAF and 2 times optical zoom. And below that we have an 8 megapixel f2.2 112 degree ultra wide lens. And with those cameras at the back you can shoot max at 4K 30 frames. A little bit disappointing for the price. Uh, and at 1080p, 3060 and slow motion of 120 and 480. Uh, with gyro uh, electronic image stabilization and uh, also including optical image stabilization and HDR. Now at the front, we have a 32 megapixel f2.4 22 millimeter wide lens and uh, that can shoot only up to 1080p 30 frames. Now that being said, in terms of video recording, uh, we are looking at exactly the same uh, specs as you do get on the non-pro version of this device, uh, with a little bit of a caveat that the non-pro version of that device has a better camera for some reason, the main one being a 64 megapixel instead of 50. Baffles the freaking mind out of me, why? Considering it costs more. Now anyway, moving on and uh, disregarding that, um, we don't just end the downgrades uh, for more money just here. In terms of battery capacity, uh, we are looking at a 4600 million power compared to the 5000 that this device comes with. Again, why? Luckily, it starts to catch up and give you better specs in, in terms of processor, uh, giving you a Snapdragon 778G. It's a 5 giga, uh, 5 gigahertz, uh, or 5G uh, capable connectivity processor, so obviously you have the 5G. Uh, it also starts with uh, 256 gigs of storage and has 12 gigs of RAM on UFS 2.2 storage type. And this is actually the only variant you'll have. So let's see if we have expendable storage. The non-pro version does. This one does not. So you only get 256. Again, buffles the freaking mind out of me. Why isn't there expendable storage? These devices are the same. They are literally the same. I don't understand why they cut features from this device and why it actually weighs more. That's also a better question. Ah, oh boy. Okay, continuing uh, to a couple additional things that aren't necessarily visible. We do have a under display fingerprint sensor. Uh, we have uh, reverse charging uh, and obviously the 80 watt uh, wired charging uh, running power delivery 3.0 and quick charge 3. Um, 
it should charge your device up to 50% in about 10 minutes. So it's stupidly fast, if not more. Uh, it's not advertised, but that's about, I would guess, somewhere along those lines. A 67 watt charger can uh, can get your uh, can get your device uh, with 5000 milliamp uh, to 50% in 15 minutes. This has smaller battery and faster charging. It could be even less than 10 minutes, to be honest. Uh, but it's just a let's call it an educated guess. Now, uh, last thing, this device comes up. Uh, out of the box with Android 13 running uh, its own skin, Color OS 13.1. And that's about all there is to this device. It's a expensive device that uh, for some reason in certain cases fails to deliver more than the non-pro version of this device, which uh, I, 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 the reason I was gonna give you a better um, better recommendation of a device was because the non-pro version of this device was already expensive and underperforming uh, but this device apart from the processor underperforms its non-pro counterpart how do you manage to have this bad like come on so with that being said i have uh, full confidence not recommending this device because not only is it expensive, coming at 650 euros, that's close to like, what, $800? That is near a flagship price. Some devices like that uh, of, uh, at flagship grade cost this much and obviously will perform significantly better. This device not only comes at a, almost a flagship price, it doesn't deliver almost anywhere flagship performance so with that being said i have a suggestion an alternative to this device the pro and also the non-pro version which costs less than non-pro version and we're talking about a decently less while being more powerful in every way than the pro version of this device and for some people this might not be a surprise that's going to be a xiaomi poco f5 pro this device literally has no competition it's it's that good i i probably sound like a broken record for anyone who's seen the these kind of videos before uh i'm not necessarily a fanboy of xiaomi but they do create some pretty decent devices from time to time and Poco F5 Pro is one of those. Now let me start off with the price tag, uh, just so you have an understanding. Uh, the price tag is 570 uh, euros. About, that's actually incorrect. It's actually, let me quickly check. So right now, in terms of PLN, this device costs uh, 2,600 PLN. Uh, actually even less, depending on where you go for. Uh, 2560 it's pretty cheap uh, basically and is the idea so it's somewhere like 400 uh, 400 something dollars it's pretty let's actually round it up to 500 bucks so for 500 bucks you get a device that outperforms this one that costs more than 700 and uh, you get a faster processor uh, you get bigger battery uh, slower charging I also get a uh, better display uh, being also high resolution so let me just go uh, literally spec by spec comparing it um, display wise 6.67 inches compared to uh, this one being 6.7 so it's just like 0.03 uh, whatever that doesn't really matter it's the same uh, same size uh, Gorilla Glass 5 this one doesn't specify uh, when I say this one I will always refer to the one that we're talking in a video uh, which is the um, uh, Oppo Reno uh, 10 Pro. Okay, continuing. AMOLED display with 68 billion colors instead of one that this one has. Uh, 120 hertz refresh rate, again, same. Uh, peak brightness of 1400 nits, significantly brighter compared to this one, uh, boasting only 950 peak brightness. Uh, Android 13, again, same as here. Uh, base storage, 
256, same as this one, though uh, POCO can go up to 512 gigs of storage. Um, I will mention one thing, the 256, the, the lowest end model, comes with 8 gigabytes of RAM instead of the 12, but uh, the one step up is 256, 12 gigs, which will be exactly the same as this one. And apart from that, it also has the benefit of running UFS 3.1 storage instead of the 2.2 that this one comes with, which is slower uh, compared to the 3.1, obviously. Camera-wise, 64 megapixel, uh, higher than this one. I'm just gonna touch upon the main sensor, to be honest. Uh, in terms of recording, uh, 8K instead of the 4 at 24 frames, while at 4K, which this device can do, uh, it records at 30 frames, just as this one does, and the 60, unlike this device. Uh, front, 16 megapixel, same here, uh, though Poco can record at 60 frames at 1080p at the front. Also has an under-display fingerprint sensor, uh, 67 watt charging, power delivery 3.0, a uh, quick charge uh, 10, 3 plus, and it can charge your device to 50% in 15 minutes as advertised. And additionally, it comes with wireless 30 watt charging, which this doesn't even come with any kind of wireless charging, uh, which is advertised to get your device to 50% in 32 minutes. All of that for about 500 bucks. And the processor, which I, I don't think I mentioned. Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, which uh, till not too long ago, it was the uh, best processor for Android on the market without having any competition. It only got replaced by the newer version of itself. The 8 Plus Gen 1 is basically the highest end processor uh, and got replaced by the newer model of it, uh, being the 8 Gen 2. But it's still a hefty uh, performance compared to the uh, seven, uh, 770 something that this one comes with. So yeah, um, just to point that out there, other devices that use the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 would be the uh, Galaxy Fold 4, which obviously is a little bit expensive, well, a lot expensive, overpriced as heck, uh, but I just want to kind of point that out in terms of performance. This device can multitask without a problem and do all kinds of stuff that you throw at it and it just breezes through it. It's an insanely powerful processor. Obviously a flagship grade. This device costs more and under delivers almost in every kind of aspect. So with that being said, I would only recommend going for the Poco F5 Pro, uh, which is cheaper and better in every way. So that's my recommendation for everyone who is actually interested in this. And with that being said, hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe, and thanks for watching.